Now, Netflix has been urged to pull Dave Chappelle's latest stand-up comedy special over jokes allegedly that are discriminatory against transgender people. The revered US comic said gender is a fact. How dare he? Mm. Uh, in his show, The Closer, and he shared his backing for J.K. Rowling as well. Yes, well, the Harry Potter author attracted strong criticism for statements about the concept of biological sex. Advocacy group GLAAD accused Chappelle of delivering an anti-LGBTQ diatribe. This is not the first time Chappelle, has been widely considered one of the greatest stand-up comics of all time, has been accused of transphobia. His previous Netflix specials included jokes about Caitlyn Jenner, who he did mention in this special that he is friends with, and the trans community in general. Indeed. Well, for more on this story, we are joined by GB News's entertainment correspondent, the one and only Josh Rom. Josh, thank you very much. Bring us the latest. Well, I think the latest is this is an uh, example in front of our eyes once again that we're getting a lot of, and that is of cancel culture because he's been widely condemned on social media. Um, Netflix subscribers have been asking the streaming giant to pull the uh, special, which is titled The Closer, which actually at first landed itself in the top ten in its opening weekend on Netflix. So it was popular at first, but... I think once people watched it and uh, they, you know, caught wind of the jokes and, you know, jumping on the bandwagon on social media, he's been widely condemned for this and they've, there's, there have been calls to take the show off the streaming giant. Now, you said some of the statements that he said in the, um, in the special in your link there. He said, um, he said, uh, gender is a fact. Every human being on Earth had to pass through the legs of a woman to be on Earth. That is a fact. Mm -hmm. Obviously, talking about, you know, biological women. I, I, sorry, that's wrong. Obviously, talking about the biological fact that women give birth. That mm -hmm. was what he was talking Controversial statement today God. now. Controversial <laughs> statement, <laughs> which, you know... Is is uh, is a fact as I'll you stated, you wrong, Josh? I'll burn but something thing, one day. I, I, I've got a question, Josh. I mean, because we are really talking about a minority, and isn't isn't this potentially part of Netflix's mm -hmm. publicity campaign? I mean, they're not stupid. They they would have known that that would have caused a little bit of controversy, and and right now it's driving up the conversation about Dave Chappelle's special. Exactly, and we're talking about this now. But I think. Dave Chappelle in his special was not just talking about the trans community and J.K. Rowling. He also mentioned Kevin Hart and the Oscars um, controversy mm, when mm. he was stripped of hosting duties of yeah. hosting the Academy Awards for um, historic um, historic comments that he made previously, which he, you know, at first stood by saying it's comedy, but then actually did go on to apologise for. Yeah. But the Oscars and the Academy still stripped him of his hosting duties. And he said at the end, all I ask, with all humility, stop punching down all my people. So I think what Dave Chappelle was doing in the special was not just addressing the whole kind of trans and minority aspects, he was addressing council culture as a whole, mm. and was kind of addressing the fact that good people who are known to be good mm. at comedy and, you know, are creative in their work mm. are being cancelled left, right and centre. Mm. And I think that was what he was trying to address in his, um, in his comedy special. I mean, earlier we talked about Kathleen Stock experiencing a campaign of harassment mm. at, at University of Sussex for um, alleged claims of transphobia. I mean, isn't comedy meant to be one of those things that let off steam for these in intense debates? Isn't comedy the very place that we should be having these uh, thorny conversations. Absolutely, and th I think the thing is with comedy, it's comedy is known to push the boundaries, and it's known to be experimental. And 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 I I think of Joan Rivers making Holocaust jokes. You know, she's Jewish. She could never, if she was still alive now, she would. Well, hope I would like to think she would get away with it, but you never know on social media the reaction it would be. The people that would, I think. Very often, people get offended on other people's oh, yeah, behalf. Mm. And I think that's part of the problem, is people jump on the social media consensus on people's behalf with the kind of, we fight for you type... But there's something deeply patronising about that. And, you know, I, I, I imagine, I don't know, you may have views on this as, uh, as I do, but, you know, when people do things, a lot of the time, some, of the, some people that, are, that might have the ultimate say on it, 
let's say that those people are, are white, middle-class, privately educated individuals, and then an issue raises its head that maybe one person on Twitter points out about or something, and they feel like, oh, right, I have to now show solidarity with this particular community, so we need to go radicalise. Actually, have they consulted people about this? Do people of that particular quotes-unquote suppressed minority want them to necessarily take such extreme action? We don't tend to I know. Mean, there isn't a clergy of no. ethnic <laughs> minority people, but there's no-one to yeah. consult, and I just right, think they should speak to the for Illuminati of ethnic minority people <laughs> right now and ask them yet again. <laughs> but, uh, no, but actually, I must say, you means, you means a very valid point, actually, because during... When the George Floyd incident happened, I was speaking to some of my black friends and they were saying, please don't use certain hashtags, don't do certain mm. things. And it, was a, and it was a real conversation yeah. that I was having because actually, rather than just following the social media consensus, you know, I was talking about the actual issues about how I can help. Yeah. And I think that's... Imp and I think it's a very valid point that you say, rather than just seeing something on social media going, oh, that's awful, I'm offended. No, stop have the conversations first, talk to people who are affected by the actual issues, get their takes on it, and then move forward with that knowledge in mind. And, and I think, as you and, said, it's and, a very important and issue. always consult the clergy. Well, and I, what, what, do you, what do you think well, about I, that? I mean, I, I think that you don't have a right to not be offended. Being offended is not an argument. You know, there's a lot of things that we, ha we, we find offensive in daily life, but actually when you live in a tolerant, free Absolutely. and diverse society, the people that promote diversity a lot... And, you know, and free speech as well, and freedom exactly. of expression, it's very important. Except that, you know, the way that we negotiate differences, as you said, is through free speech and open dialogue, and that means free speech for comedians and people that disagree with you. And this is a very real and live debate, and, and Dave Chappelle is entitled to express his view on it, which many people mm. share. And I think as well, going... If you talk about controversy, that then gives you the opportunity to then, you know, address the controversy and, as you say, mm. open the dialogue so mm. the issue actually gets confronted rather than simply just kind of going, oh, no, that's offended, brushing over it, brush it under the carpet, anyone that says otherwise, cancel, because that doesn't do anything for open debate and dialogue and addressing the issue itself. I think it actually increases tension and a sense of distrust between people if you can't actually express yourself. And, okay. and also splits people down the middle and increases the kind of tribalisation of society being like one side or the other rather than both sides coming to the table and having that discussion. Here, yeah. here. Well, there we go. Fantastic stuff. Thank you very much, Josh Rom. And great to have you on the show, as always, Josh Rom, our entertainment correspondent.